How's it going, Josh? What's Just going uh, how has this season been for you? I mean, obviously the production's probably not what you want, but how are you taking that? Has it been a frustrating year for you so far? Um, you know, it's definitely been a little frustrating. Um, just, I guess it's me coming off the season I had last year. You know, I was, I guess, hoping and I wouldn't say assuming, but, you know, I was, I guess, thinking that this year was just going to be, I guess, a climb. But I'm not saying it, it, it hasn't. Um, you know, I've been finding other things to work on, whether it's blocking, playing without the ball, um, you know, all the little tweaks and things that I need to work on. Um, but, you know, it's, it's definitely been a little frustrating, but, you know, I see it as it ain't going to do nothing but get me ready. Um, you know, hopefully, God willing, I make it to the next level. Um, I might not be that number one guy um, I, um, as soon as I get there. So, you know, it's it's been it's been going. Um, I'm just taking it as a, a good thing and not a negative thing and just keep staying ready for when my number gets called. Josh, you seem like one of the guys on the team that's pretty involved in the community. I've seen you speak at a lot of events and stuff like that. Just it's homecoming week. Just what does this kind of this area mean to you? Oh, um, shoot. Five years here, man. It's um seemed like yesterday I was rolling in um in six fifty and um unpacking all my things from home. Um but it it's been nothing um but the best since I've been here in South Carolina for the past five years and um it's homecoming. It's nothing like being in Columbia, South Carolina. I mean you guys just seen it last Saturday, man. It was rocking. So expect it to be not even better um than it was last season. Um, um last last week, sorry. Um, but, you know, it, it means everything to me to be able to play here and sp spend my career here. And, um, you know, I'm just taking it all at one time. It, aside from the individual stuff, I guess you're probably pretty fired up about being 5-2, and two, top 25 in the country as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I really don't, you know, I really don't pay attention to it. I mean, it's, it's nice to be in the top 25, uh, but, you know, I, we can't get complacent. And um, just, hey, we in the top 25, and next thing you know, we're not in it. So, you yeah. know what I'm saying? You just got to keep your head down. Um, it's good that, you know, everybody sleeps on us and talks bad about, you know, South Carolina, that we don't have the players, we don't have the coaches. Uh, we can't do this. We can't compete with anybody. But now we know. Now everybody know that, you know, we can go out there and play ball. Um, it's football we've been playing ever since we was kids. And, um, you know, it, it's great to have the recognition. But at the end of the day, we got Mizzou this week, and that's the focus. And individually, last couple of games, it seems like you have been more involved, catching more passes and third downs. Yeah. How nice is it to, to make a big play on third down and keep the chains going? You know, as, as a receiver, that's always good. Um, for me, myself, it's, it's always good to, you know, feel like I'm contributing um, to the offense. Um, you know, everybody likes the ball in his hands, um, but it's only one ball to get passed around. Um, but, you know, it, at the end of the day, it goes back to my coaches and, and Spence trusting me on third down. And you know, being able to get me to rock. So whenever it comes my way, you just got to go out there and make the play. Hey, Josh. Um, we've seen your targets go up a bit the last couple of weeks. What do you feel like has changed in just kind of the offense? Is that just guys rotating through, or you know, has the connection between you and Spencer maybe improved or something like that? Um, me and Spence, you know, we we talk. We have our little communication moments, and um, you know, me just telling him, hey, just trust me, and um, you know, whenever it's like you said, whenever my numbers get called, it's mostly, I would say, it's mostly just being, you know, progression through, progression through the play, and you know, I just end up popping open. Um, but you know, uh, like I guess that one play on the sideline, he looked at me, I looked at him, and he let me go to work, and you know, he threw me the ball, and I was just, like I said, able to go make the play when the ball came my way. Um, but you know, like I said, for me, it, it's good to, I guess, see the targets. Um, going up more, but like I said, you know, I just can't get complacent and, you know, get in a big head. Like, um, you know, somebody told me um, when the time come, I got to be ready for the play and not it be ready for me. So I'm just always just staying humble and just keep on thanking God for all the opportunities that come my way. Yeah, I think your two catches on Saturday were third downs and both of them were explosive plays. Just is, what's the difference? Is there a difference between being a good third down receiver and what are some of the traits that receiver has to have to be good at making plays on third downs? Um, you know, I always just have the mindset of, you know, just keeping the offense high on the field, um, not coming off. You know, it's, it's kind of demoralizing, you know, when we have a good run and um, next, you know, third down come and we come off the field or when the defense just comes off and we just go on and then next thing you know, it's third down and we got to go back off the field. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't say I pride myself as, you know, kind of being a big third down um, receiver, but 
you know, I love third downs because, you know, that's when that was kind of like the big plays when you want to get, you know, the ball to your, your playmakers and, you know, let them go to work. Um, so, like I said, you know, it's really just been going through the plays and Spence trusting us, trusting me last game um, to be able to, you know, go out there and make it happen. So, you know, I really just say just for a receiver to be, I guess, big on third down, they just got to just got to get open. Um, that's that's really what's, what it's all about. Josh, you mentioned some of those little things and, and picking up things where you can. I, I guess on punt return, I think your punt return yard average is up like four, five, six yards from last year. I guess what are you maybe seeing in that side of the, your game and, and how do you feel like you've maybe improved there? And I, I guess what's kind of gone into that, if anything? Um, to be honest, I, I just I just told myself, you know, just trust myself. And I, I tell myself before your game, just go return all of them. Um, I know last year I, I kind of fair catch them a, a lot, um, which goes back into – I was playing a lot, um, you know, going right back on offense at receiver. So, you know, now I've taken that that role a little back. So, you know, I just – at prime return, that's another chance to get the ball in my hands. So I just want to make something happen. Um, if I see the look, you know, like I said, like you said, it's gone up since last year. So I really just try to be hungry and just try to return all the ones I can get. Um, but believe it or not, I will fair catch it um, if the look doesn't look good. <laughs> Um, but, you know, it's just another chance for the ball to get in my hand and just trying to make something good for the team, give us good field position. And um, I think Coach discussed it earlier. I think we're third in punt return in SEC. So, you know, that, that comes from my teammates um, giving me good looks. And, you know, the rest is what I can do with the ball in my hands. Early on in the season, Coach Beamer wasn't happy with the perimeter blocking, said it was affecting the run game. How, how did he uh, convey that message to you guys? What did y'all do to improve it? And how much uh, praise internally have you guys gotten for uh, the run, run game getting going more so the last few weeks? Um, perimeter blocking is, is a, it's a big thing um, because, you know, with the backs that we have, they can bounce it out. Um, it, it's not always going to go inside. It can bounce out um, design runs to go outside. Like I said, every Tuesday we do perimeter drill. And like I said, some days it might be a little cold out there, but you know you got to buckle up. You know, sometimes your hand may hurt, um, hitting, hitting the guys. But you know, it, it's a it's a big part of this offense. Like I said, it can be a run, it can be a pass on the perimeter, which is another thing to the run. Um, but I wouldn't say it's been a lot of praise. You know, the coaches tell us, hey, we did a good job. Um, always need to improve on perimeter blocking, but it's hard just because you know the rules change. You can't cut block. You know, you just got to stay square, you know, not try to hold. You got to let go at the right time. Um, but, you know, we, we pride ourselves in the receiver room as, you know, when the ball come our way, go make the play. Or when it comes our way, not literally, when the ball is coming out behind us, we got to um, got to still make the play for the running back, whoever has the ball behind us. So, you know, it's just really just keeping our head down and just doing what we got to do on the outside. Um, this secondary has kind of grown a lot this year. Some freshmen have come in there. What's it like going against those guys every day in practice? And what's the biggest growth you've seen from some of the younger kind of, I guess, corners and safeties? Um, you know, for the most part, you know, when you're on the team, man, I, I wouldn't say, you know, not down talking on other guys that we go up against, but you go against your best competition in practice. And, um, you know, just seeing the growth of the young guys, our freshmen, going against those guys every day, day in and day out, um, you know, it's a lot. So, you know, it's just, you just really, I don't know, man. It's, you go against the same guys every day. You know, some days they may win. Some days we may win. Um, so it's just just grinding out. And by the time you get to game day, everything is a lot smoother. Um, it will be some things that we haven't seen that Mizzou defense will show us. Um, but we just got to adjust on the fly and go make it happen. Gosh, I know when you... <laughs> um, I know when you made the decision to, to come back to USC this year, you had talked a lot about that being the best thing for your daughter. Just kind of, I know she's coming up on a year now. Like, what has it been like for you during this season, you know, juggling that aspect of your personal life with the, the season? Um, it's, it's been tough, um, you know, dealing with football, going home, being a dad. Uh, well, I'm always a dad. But, you know, coming here to play football, dad life and then going to school it's it's a lot to juggle um but you know I'm the man in the house i got to get it done um so you know i just want to set a good standard for her um to know that i got her back um for this team that i got their back whatever they need me to do 
Um, like I said, it ain't been, I guess, what we all expected for me to coming into this year. But at the same at the same time, just got to go out there and do what I got to do. And um, you know, it's been it's some it's some tough days at home. Um, I think like last week, she just got over a cold. Um, so you know, that's been tough. Waking up at four o'clock in the morning to make a bottle. She just got off formula, so you know now we on almond milk, but we don't have a bottle warmer, so we got to put the milk in the microwave. Uh, make sure it's not too hot. Got to put a finger in there. It, it, it's a lot. I'm telling you, it, it is a lot. Um, I was gonna get her um, and bring her here, but he said coach was going at 1:30, so I feel like I had enough time. But you know, I'm just taking it day by day and. Um, thanking God for the opportunity that she's here. Um, like I said, she'll be 11 months on the 7th of November, um, which is like coming up right around the corner. So seeing her grow, it's, um, it's been an experience. So, you know, you know that's about it. Darius in the post-game press conference on Saturday was advertising completely cocky. I didn't know if you wanted to give a pitch for the pod as well. Just tune in. Um, <laughs> tune in. It's, uh, it's pretty fun. Um, like I said, you know, this is my first time having a podcast. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. We're completely cocky. Um, like I said, we just tune in every week. You know, we discuss about, you know, the upcoming team, what we did um, previous week, how we felt after the game. It's a lot of bloopers in there. Trust me, when we go over the ads, man, it, it's, it, we've been taking like 30 tries just to, you know, make it right. Um, but, you know, that's the whole thing about it, you know, having a good time. It's not really just straight about football. Like you said, we discuss life and how we do outside of here. It's it's good. It's you know it's just a, a good perspective of a college athlete other than football. Um, but tune in, completely cocky. Spotify, Apple, YouTube, look it up. <laughs> hey Josh, uh, first of all, fatherhood is going to get a lot more rewarding as the years go on. You got Thank a lot you. to look forward to. That's Thank great. You. Um, you know, whenever you get a good return, Xavier Leggett brings a kick back for a touchdown. Fans are all screaming about Beamer Ball and, and this and that. How much pride do you guys take in that legacy and the fact that you are doing so well on special teams this year? Uh, we take it. We take it very. Go ask Pete Limbo. Uh, I, I promise you, he take it very serious. Um, um, so you know, it's it's good to, I guess, have all three favors three phases as dominant as we've been on this this little stretch that we was on that we're on right now um but like you said we, we pride ourselves on it hard like you know Zay had the 100 yard kick return you know I'm, I'll be telling the punt return oh punt defense I'm like man y'all stop blocking the kick so I can try to get one <laughs> um <laughs> so it, you know it, and when I do get one somebody miss a block and I'm like man if you could just just hold on for a little bit man I can like I said, I did get one, but unfortunately it got called back. Um, so, you know, it, we pride ourselves very hard on it. Um, you know, I said, we go over it every day um, trying to execute. Like I said, Coach Limbo, man, he literally has, like, real plays. Like, for offense, he has real plays on special teams. Um, so, you know, I'm pretty sure many special teams, they just have a couple calls. Coach Limbo has a whole list of things that we can do on special teams. Um, but like I said, it ain't gonna, it's not going to do anything but get us ready for the next level. Um, like you said, I may go to the next level and I may be on special teams for my, my whole career. Um, so having this staff here, being so hard on special teams, you know, it, it's a wonderful thing. So can't take it lightly. Appreciate y'all. Going to CBS. Uh, first going? of all, just how good did it feel to get off that injury and come back? And are you 100% now? Um, Obviously, it felt great being out there. Um, it's just been my dream, just being able to be out there playing for South Carolina. So, um, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm 100%, but I'm getting close to that um, close to that point. Christian, I know uh, you've experienced being ranked at Wake Forest a bunch, but how does it feel? Does it feel any different with these guys, and what's the mood of everyone knowing that you guys are in the top 25 this week? Um, I think as a team, uh, we kind of expected that on the, uh, since the start of the season. So, I mean, we're just trying to uh, get higher up in the ranks each uh, each week. What did this game mean to you, just the win? Oh, um, I mean, it felt good. I mean, I played them back in uh, 2017 at Wake Forest and, uh, and the Belt Bowl. So just 
being able to beat a team twice is just an amazing feeling. Uh, yeah, Christian, uh, you guys ran several direct snaps to you. Just how often do you all rep that in practice, and uh, how, comfortable do you, how comfortable do you feel taking those direct snaps uh, like you did on Saturday? Uh, we just threw that in last week, really, uh, just before the game. We only ran it uh, maybe like two, three times in practice. So just knowing that we were able to at least um, get the first down on one of those plays is pretty good. Hey, Christian, hope you're doing well. Um, you guys had your most efficient game of the season on third downs last week, eight for 16. Is there anything you kind of chalk that up to, and how do you keep that going against the Missouri team that's top 10 in the country and stopping third downs this year? Um, in my opinion, I didn't think uh, we did a good job on third downs, really. Um, I feel like we should have converted more on third down. Um, and I would say I kind of take those two on me, really, because I should have just went down and just fought for those two extra yards instead of taking a – a two-yard loss. We'll follow up on, on both those questions. Uh, the direct snap and, and getting that and being able to just get directly downhill, how nice is that as opposed to maybe the previous system you're in and, and having to be a little more patient with it, how nice is it to, to get the ball and go? I think it's fun, honestly. Uh, that's something that I've always wanted to do. I've been used to just going slow, just uh, sitting there in the mesh, but just being able to go downhill is just, just a fun offense being. And, and you mentioned the third down. Is that the all – work any more on that during practice or is it still just kind of same old same old and trying to get get that improved uh yeah we just, we're gonna get that improved um i mean we're just pretty much focusing on just you know keeping our shoulder square and not trying to get a 30 40 yard uh run we just got to fight for those like get two three extra yards Uh, yeah, Christian, you said you're still working to try to get back to 100%, but getting on the field at this point uh, in the season, what was that road like, road back like for you? And, um, you know, what kind of dynamic do you feel you bring to the offense? Um, just bringing more of like a, just, you know, just being a power back, really. Um, you know, we got all three different types, three, four different types of running backs. You know, we got speed back, we got a shifty back. Just being able to be a part of the offense and contribute each week is just, you know, just uplifting for me and just brings uh, – something to the table each week. Hey, Christian. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the energy at Willie B and what it's been like for you guys so far this year? Wait, who was talking? Oh, sorry. Oh, okay, okay. I couldn't find yeah, you. Yeah, no, you know, you're good. So can you just talk a little bit about the energy so far this season at Willie B and how much it's helped you guys, you know, as a team? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I want to shout out to the, the the fan base here. It's just – it's an incredible environment to be in. Um, they definitely helped us uh, – win that game, you know, especially when Texas A&M had to go on third downs. You couldn't hear a thing in there. So, I mean, I just want to shout out to the Gamecock fans and just say I appreciate y'all. Christian, you obviously were a part of some really special things at Wake Forest and, and doing things that that program hadn't done in a long time or ever. I mean, with where you guys are at right now and, and going into this back half of the schedule, I know you take it game by game, but what's it kind of been like to see come together over the last, what, I guess three, four weeks and where you guys are at from – you know, week one or the Georgia game to now? Yeah. Um, from the start of the season, I didn't feel like we were connecting as a team. We weren't really clicking. So, like, just looking back at uh, then and then coming back to now, we're, we've, grown, we've grown together so much. You know, we've built the team chemistry. We're starting to, you know, play for one another, and that's just fun to be around. Hey, Christian. Hello. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the relationship with you and Marshawn at this point in the season and how you feel like you guys sort of complement each other as a as a duo in that running back room? Oh yeah. Um you know, it just all it all starts uh, you know, outside of football really, um, with me and him. You know, we're always with each other, we ride together every day. Um so I mean we're just pretty much trying to make each other better each day. We come and we compete each day. You know, we compete on the video game <laughs> after practice. Uh I mean, me and Marshawn built a really, really good relationship over the past, you know, couple of months. Okay, hey, what what video game do you guys play? <laughs> Warzone. Who, who's who's better? Who's got like the the edge right now? Uh, I would say Marshawn because he gets a little, he starts uh, getting a little agitated just because we're sitting around. So he just likes to push a lot of people and get a lot of kills. <laughs> 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 Yeah.
<laughs> getting home was it a little little frustrating not getting home? Yeah, um, it's always frustrating. Uh, you know, you practice it, um, you prepare for it all week, and then you get to the game. But, you know, pressure still count. Our coach was telling us, even though we didn't get a sack, we still affected uh, the pass game. Kind of sticking with it a little bit, but just how much do you guys, how pleased are y'all with the production you're getting up front in the pass rush, being able to affect the quarterback these last two weeks? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. It's been pretty good. Um, uh, going forward, you know, affecting it is good, but, you know, sacks would be better, you know. Um, plus, they had a lot of yards running. Um, you know, sacks would affect that too, push them back a little bit. Hey Jordan, obviously you're a hometown kid. What does it mean to you know have the atmosphere like it, like you did at Williams Bryce on Saturday, and what does it mean to play in front of I guess the hometown crowd? Yeah, um, Saturday was really big. Um, you know, most teams prepare for offense and defense game planning, but you know you might want to have to prepare for the crowd too. It was loud. Um, you know, they had like eight offsides or something like that. So um, playing in front of Willie B when it was that loud was really big. Off of that, um, you've had homecoming a couple of times and been able to experience what it's like um, on the field and the atmosphere. What are you most excited about this time around? Um, really, just the energy. Um, you know, like you said, the fans um, having that same energy. You know, as a team, we uh, you know bring the intensity when we play. Over here, John. Do you got any? Uh you got any family a bunch? You got the whole Hammond school coming over here or anything for the game on Saturday? Nah, just my family. My family will be there. Hey, Jordan, what's the biggest thing you've seen from Missouri's offense so far, kind of getting on the tape and seeing what kind of challenges they could present Saturday? Um, yeah, their offensive line is pretty big. Um, they like a lot of movement. Um, we just really got to stay in our gaps, you know, play smart um, and, you know, have effort the whole game. Jordan, I guess for you, when you look at sort of the way you're playing right now compared to week one, I guess, how do you feel like you've kind of, whether improved or gotten better, what, what do you think's kind of been, you know, what, what do you think has kind of worked for you from week one to now? Probably understanding my assignment more. Um, since like the first we put in a game plan, you know, our game plans really don't change much. But, you know, understanding the game plan and then trying to give effort the whole time I'm playing. Hey, Jordan, some of your teammates earlier spoke to the fact that the team is right now. They said it's not something they overly pay attention to, but what are your thoughts on uh, the fact that you guys did make the top 25 and uh, have you noticed that, you know, give any, I guess, boost of confidence to anybody on your team? Um, yeah, I think that's uh, pretty big, but I think as a whole, we really don't really look at it much. We just, you know, go week by week, um, prepare for the next game. Jordan, how do you feel like the run defense has progressed maybe from the start of the year to where you guys sit right now on this four-game win streak? Um, I think everybody's been real physical up front, um, staying in their gaps, you know, being fundamentally sound. Um, everything we learned from the beginning, I think it's coming along now. You can see it on, on film. Uh, Jordan, two questions. Um, you've been able to string together a couple of really good games here, one against Kentucky and then especially against Texas A&M. Um, how do you feel that, I mean, you're gaining momentum going down through this year. How do you think that's going to help down the stretch? Um, yeah, um, going week by week, just trying to, you know, keep keep it up. If I did something good last week, watch film, and then try to do that again the next week. Yeah, and then my second question was, um, clearly you brought Zach in here with you. How much has he helped? Um, how much has he helped with just kind of, uh, you know, you finding your groove and whatnot and just kind of sorting things out there on the defensive line? Yeah, he, help, he helps a lot. Um, anytime, like, I'm tired in the game, I can just look at him. Uh, he always has, like, this mad, <laughs> this mad face. You know, he's always, like, talking to the offensive line. So it, like, hypes me up a little bit, uh, gets me prepared for the next snap. Hey, Jordan. Um, Zach had told us last week that y'all were trying to get a scooter at the State Fair and – were not successful. Did you go back? Were you able to get the scooter? <laughs> I did not go back. Um, I spent like $120 trying to get the scooter, but I <laughs> couldn't get it. Hey, Jordan, Zach Pickens here. Um, um, how do you feel about Zach Pickens? You know, I know you guys do a lot of things off the field and have fun. 
your 2K player is like, what? He's sorry, right? <laughs> Can you talk about him, please? Oh, yeah. Um, Zach's pretty cool. Um, he's really good at football. He's hilarious. Um, he's a good kid all around. That's really about it. You know? He's pretty good too. Yeah, yeah, you got that right. Yeah. Cam. Good. Uh, last game, a couple of defensive holding penalties looked kind of ticky tag, but when those happen, I mean, do you feel like you're getting picked on a little bit? Maybe that they wouldn't call those on other players. Just how do you approach that? How do you maybe keep from not doing that in future games? I mean, it's just part of the game, you know what I'm saying? Just take it play by play, just play the next play after that. I mean, can't really say they picking on you and stuff like that. It's their job to throw the flags and stuff like that. So I just take it on the chin, move on. Cam Jordan was just in here talking about how Missouri likes to do some shifts offensively. They really like to move around as a cornerback. How difficult is that for you guys? And as you're game planning, what are you paying attention to when offenses shift and, and try to use motion on y'all? Um, I mean, a lot of the shifts, just for the cornerback's perspective, it ain't really like too much that you got to regard to and stuff like that. I mean, you might have just a little eye and no motion here and there and stuff like that. But like, just like those those two motions and those, the shift from the tight end and the shift from the back, moving the back from pistol to the, to the gun. So just stuff like that, that'd probably be like keys for the safety and the nickels and stuff, just uh, knowing where their gaps is moving, moving to and where it's going to be at. Hey, Cam, hope you're doing well. you got Luther Burton on Saturday. He's one of the um, toughest receivers in the conference. How much do you relish matchups like that, kind of one-on-one, -on -one, and what's the biggest challenge he presents going into this game? Uh, I ain't gonna lie. I really don't know about bro like that. But, I mean, I guess he's a good player and stuff like that. But, you know I mean, just take it day by day, just like taking the other thing. Cam, I think last week was one of the first weeks you guys have had pretty much everyone in the secondary healthy at the same time. I guess just – what was that like? And I guess what's it been like to kind of see guys get back and have that full complement of guys? And, and I guess how much do you feel like that can kind of help you guys down the stretch now toward the back end of the, the back end of the season? I mean, y'all see it can get scary. I mean, like, ain't nobody really you. You don't really see no ball caught over 10 yards, but really not even over five. Like, so we just making sure that we home in on the detail and stuff like that and bring our game every game. I'm kind of piggybacking off Ben a little bit here, but we saw a big game from um, we saw a big game from Darius Rush. Sorry. Um, so what does that kind of mean, just to see him back and you know have somebody else back there with you? I mean, they always been like that. I mean, even though we don't get the recognition we deserve and stuff like that sometimes, but I mean, we always always been like in a candidate for ACC Player of the, Defensive Player of the Week stuff like that. Just making sure that we always home in on our details, make sure we doing everything right on top of every coverage stuff like that. So it don't even matter like. Him getting that, like, that's just big. That just shows what he's done and what he done put in this whole time he done been here. Cam, you guys are on the longest win streak since I think you've been at South Carolina. How, number one, just how good does that feel and how, as an older guy on this team, do you kind of keep the guys moving forward and not get caught up in the rankings and the, the win streak that's going on right now? Um, right now, I mean, you saying being an older guy, I mean, I ain't never been this high. I ain't never won this much. I ain't never been ranked. I ain't never been, had none of this. So it's a new to me. It's a new thing to me too. So just trying to take it day by day, just trying to make sure that everybody stay their course, just follow the details, everything, do everything right. How's it going, Brad? I had a question about Cam. You know, I'm sure you know him pretty well. I haven't been here this long, but got a couple of penalties called on him Saturday, maybe kind of ticky-tack. How does he handle that, you know, during the game, immediately after the game? What kind of emotions do you see on him when he gets called for a penalty? Uh, yeah, well, Cam Cam Smith, as you can tell on the field, like he he puts everything out there. Uh, he plays balls to the wall, and um, he's a very competitive guy. Uh, so, of course, calls like that, like he's going to get frustrated, and you can see that on the field, you know. But that's any competitor, you know, who gets a, a call like that, who you feel like is – that you feel like might be a little ticky-tack, could be either way. But, uh, you know, he just – he lets his motion show at first and then riles it in, gets it back together, and, you know, next play mentality, that's what you have to have. So, Brad, Jordan Burtz was just in here talking about Missouri's offense and how they like to shift and maybe change some eyes a little bit as a guy who plays in the middle of this defense. What are some of the keys to defending that and how much of that normally is just window dressing and, and just trying to make a defense get out of a gap or two? All right. Well, I feel like um, – majority of it is what you just said, uh, you know, window dressing and trying to get people 
out of gaps and uh, get guys' eyes in the wrong places and stuff like that. Um, so just really just preparation for that is just watching film, um, knowing where you're supposed to be, knowing who's handling those motions, and knowing when you have to, you know, uh, be accountable of those motions as well. So I just feel like film um, and, and, and communication as a defense, you know, uh, we're all wrong, we're all right mentality, you know, so if we're talking and communicating and everybody's on the same page and we're going to get it all handled. So that's one of the things that we're just focusing this week is just on communication, making sure we're all on the same page and, and, and everybody knows their responsibility. It being homecoming week, you're a six-year guy from Pendleton. Just what does it mean to, to be, out, be able to suit up for this state and kind of what does homecoming and represent the area kind of mean to you? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it means a lot, most definitely homecoming. Uh, I consider this my home, uh, even though I'm from the upstate, like you said. Uh, I've adopted the Midlands as my home, my second home. Uh, I have family that are from this area, you know, the Orangeburg, uh, Columbia area. So I've been up here, you know, as a young kid. Um, and just this, with it being what two more, two more home games, you know, you gotta, you gotta take advantage of it. Like you don't, you don't get this crowd everywhere. You don't, you don't have that atmosphere everywhere. So I'm just trying to soak it all in these last few, and 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 just go all out, you know, and give it all my, give it my all. Brad, um, given the ups and downs that you've had here in your stay, what is this winning streak being in the top twenty-five? What is it? mean for you right now well yeah i was i was joking with demo uh the other day when i came in and i was just like i was like ah demo man i woke up this morning and we were five and two man and he was just like yeah brad it's a different feeling huh and i was like yeah it is and it, it just feels good man just there's it's we already have that positive atmosphere in this building already regardless of the fact so just to have some you know just some positivity coming around along with it with what we're actually trying to do you know, with winning four games in a row and beating teams that we haven't beaten in however many years or whatever, uh, it's it's a good feeling and, and it's a good momentum shift and, and we want to keep that going. We're going to ride that momentum and we're not going to change up anything or do anything different. We're going to attack every week the same that we have been doing um, with even more tenacity and even more focus. Uh, but it, it's just a, it's, it's a good reassurance, you know, to have that. It feels good. Do you talk to any of your teammates about that? Uh, like, do you remind them that, that you've been on some teams around here that have had success like this? Yeah, or? and you know, I have to remind myself too, because I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking that they, they felt that though, but I got to remind myself, like, yo, these guys just got here, so this is all they know, which is a good thing too. Like, you know, I was talking to some of the younger guys, like the the TJ Sanders and stuff, and 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 the Brian Thomases, you know, and this is what they know. So this culture, this this standard that we set of of winning you know, uh, so far this season, like they, they're, they're becoming accustomed to it, you know? So they're gonna want that. They're gonna, that's gonna be their standard. They're gonna shoot for that every year. So I feel like that's, that's good for them and that's great. Uh, but I just, yeah, I gotta remind those guys too. Like, you know, it, it, it just don't happen. It don't come easy. Like, you know, so you gotta, you gotta work for that. You gotta put in the work. And, and once you do that, th things will fall into place. So. Brad, obviously Mo and Strawn are out for the season, but I think last week was one of the first weeks you guys have had pretty much everyone healthy as far as the defense goes. I guess just what's that like to see that group actually, one, on the field together at the same time, and two, I guess just how much does that help to have your sort of full complement going forward, and how can you guys kind of parlay that now the rest of the way? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a long season, and it's a tough season playing in the SEC. Uh, but, uh, you know, having everybody last week, it was it was definitely a good feeling. Um, it was great to have all the guys out there on the field. We had we had all types of, 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 of players taking reps from second string guys and some guys who were, you know, third string guys. You know, we had freshmen on the field. Uh, it was so it was you got to see a mix of everything. You got to see the whole defense really out there playing a team game. And, and uh, like Coach White, he, he brought us in on Sunday and was talking about how like this specific game wasn't really like a linebackers dominated or a defensive line game or a, you know DB game. It was a complete and total game from the whole defense. Everybody made plays, and that's what you want to see from a defense, you know. And that's what we're gonna try to keep going going forward. So, hey Brad, um, speaking of Coach White, he's gotten some you know t buzz the last couple of days about you know potential head coaching jobs, but with the job up in Charlotte opening and things like that. I'm just curious what stands out to you about him. <laughs> as a defensive coordinator that, you know, could maybe prepare him for a head coaching role? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, Coach White, you know, he has the potential to do whatever he wants to do. If he wants to become a head coach, he he, he definitely can do that. Um, I just feel like he – one thing that stands out to me about him, he's just a down-to-earth guy. Like, uh, most defensive coordinators um, – 
like you you think of them as I don't know even coordinators in general. You know, you might think of them as like you know, like I don't know, just kind of like a not above the program, but. I don't know. Coach White is a guy that like anybody feels comfortable talking to from a guy who's taking scout reps to a guy who's playing 80 snaps a game. Like anybody feel comfortable coming and coming alongside Coach White and just having a conversation and it don't have to be about football, you know. So that's one of the things I feel like uh, really stuck out to me uh, about his character and just the type of man he is and, um, you know, all football things aside, just that in general, like that, that speaks volumes for me. So. Yeah, Brad, the offense has been using uh, Christian Beal Smith since he's starting to get back as kind of like a power back. Uh, I know you play against him or, you know, observe him in practice and things like that. But what about his game sticks out to you and what have you observed uh, since he's been getting starting to get back a little bit healthy? Mm -hmm. uh, well, Christian's the type of guy. He's, he's a hard nosed guy. Like he comes to work the same way every single day. Um, he's going to give you all he's got uh, every play, whether he's blocking like uh, there was he had a tremendous play uh I forgot who it was we were playing but there was a reverse I think he was leading for uh either Stognor or or uh Jalen Brooks and he was coming around the edge and just like clean three guys like back to back just leading blocking down the field you know so like that's just the type of guy he is whatever his role is he's going to do it to the best of his ability which I have a ton of respect for um because you're not going to be getting the ball a thousand times a game you know so whatever you're doing you just want to make sure you do it to the best of your ability and he's the epitome of that so uh Definitely respect for that and respect to him. Brad, um, I'm guessing you saw the uh, celebration photos at ten or the celebration at Tennessee a couple weeks ago after Alabama. You guys rushing the field. The same thing happened at LSU. Have you ever been involved in anything like that? And when you see things like that, does it look fun to you? Does it look scary or – you know, I guess it depends on what side you, uh, uh, of that game you're on. I was about to say, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it depends on what side you're on. Uh, but I mean, everybody wants that that type of win. Uh, they had a they had a huge win over there at Rocky Top. So, uh, you know, I, I can just I couldn't really even imagine it. Uh, imagine that atmosphere that they had because it was it was it was amazing. But um, just to watch on television. But yeah, every competitor wants that that type of game, that atmosphere uh, to come to life. But I mean, I'm, I'm completely content with the atmosphere that we have at Willie B every Saturday when we play at home. Like the crowd's crazy. The atmosphere that we play in is ridiculous. And, and we're able as players to just to feed off of that and to go make plays. So that in itself is, is a blessing to be able to go and play in that atmosphere. But yeah, we all want that, the, the storm in the field and you know, goalposts toppling and all that stuff. Uh, we definitely want that environment and we want that to have in that situation. And I guess you just have to, you know, wait till it comes. Brad, I hope I'm not jinxing anything, but this defense is holding opponents to nine of 37 on third down over their last three games. How, how much improved is this defense on third downs this year and especially over this last, I guess, four-game win streak? I'll say we, we are very much improved on third down. Coach White made that a, a focal point for us, like, going into the offseason last year because uh, there was just a lot of times where we just would get the third down, should have been off the field, and we allowed teams to stay on, you know, and, and that in, in turn took away time from, from our offense for them to get back on the field. Um, and that's the number one job as a defense is to put your offense back on the field. Uh, so we weren't doing that enough, and I feel like, us making that a focal point in the off season, we've been able to to tune in on a couple of things, fine tune some things, and 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 we went in with a with that being a focal point this season, and it's as you can see, it started to pay off, and we want to keep that trend going most definitely because that's how you win games is you win third down. So, hey Brad, kind of a two parter here. How do you guys, in the midst of everyone talking about you guys being ranked, in the midst of a four-game win streak, how do you guys stay dialed in, stay focused, stay all business? And then is there also kind of a, uh, a feeling in the locker room that you get this next game done this weekend, you clinch another bowl game? Uh, so how do you just stay focused between all this stuff going on? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, well, I don't think it's really hard for us as a team, to be honest, because, uh, I mean, coming into the season, I don't want to say we were expecting, like, you know, some notoriety, but we expected at least, you know, some type of respect, I felt like. And I felt like at the beginning of the season, us as a team, we really felt like we didn't receive any respect, you know. We were favored to lose every single game. And, you know, like, I, I don't know, like, we just, our players that are real playmakers weren't getting any love or respect, you know, outside, like, like some of the other teams were. So 
uh, like now that we've started to go on this little streak and get some positive positivity and people starting to speak positive things about us, like now we're starting to get pats on the back and stuff like that from, you know, outside noise. But the same way where we had blinders on and we were trying to stay focused on what we had to do in order to receive that, I guess, positive positivity and, and, and to be looked at in that light is the same way we're doing now is just, you know, blinders on and we're blocking out that same positivity because really our focus has been, Coach Beamer has been emphasizing just resisting comfort. So really, that's what we're trying to do: resist all comfort and anything that's trying to make you comfortable in this week before we go into uh, and go in on Saturday and play. Like you, you wanna you wanna stay away from it. You wanna stay away from those pats on the back and you know all the love that you're getting from the outside noise from people who probably would be showing you know some negativity to you if we would have lost those. You know what I'm saying? So you just gotta stay in and stay grounded with the people that you're working with, grinding with every single day and move on to the next one you know every every week is a new season um and that's how we're that's how we're looking at that just resisting comfort so hey Brad, we kind of talked about it earlier but this defense has really gotten some pieces back in the last couple of weeks um and particularly cam smith and uh darius rush what's it like playing in front of those two guys uh yeah like th those guys are dolls man they're uh they're masters that they craft and they perfect it every single day. They work at it every single day. And we have confidence in those guys the same way they have confidence in us uh, filling those gaps and, and fitting those runs. So, like, just to be able to have those guys back there, we have faith in them so that we can have even more confidence to go fit those runs and, and play downhill and to, and to truly stop the run, uh, one of our focal points in winning and our plans to win in the games, stopping the run. So us as linebackers feel good having those guys out on the side, man, because we know it don't matter if we got Rush or, or, or Cam out there on the island, like, they're good. Like, you know, we're not worried about that and looking over our shoulder, you know what I'm saying? And that, and that brings peace of mind for us so we can go play fast. Thank you, Brad. Yes, sir. Dog, look like I mean, you guys always had that chemistry. You and Spencer look like it's really starting to, to uh, come around now with a few catches the last game. Is that something that you guys have maybe come to Sat or Sat has come to y'all and said we're going to start featuring you guys a lot more? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, it comes down to you know making plays, winning one on ones, and I did that and set it up. I won some, and then it set it up for uh, more throws down the road. So hopefully we, we build on that in the, in the weeks to come. But it's for sure good to start getting rolling. For a lot of teams, it seems like getting ranked is a bit of a hope, but when y'all have talked about it, it's almost been an expectation. Just what did it mean to kind of be able to check that off the list this week? Uh, I didn't really care. Uh, <laughs> I didn't really care. I mean, we still got Missouri coming up next. We either were ranked or not. We still, we still got them, but it didn't, I didn't really care. Hey, Austin. Hope you're doing well. You had your most efficient game of the year on third downs as a team. You were eight for 16. How do you do you chalk that up to anything? And how do you keep that going against a Missouri team that's top 10 in the country and stopping third downs right now? Uh, we got to get better um, on third down. Eight 16 is good, but we still got to get better and um, just continue to uh, know what we're doing, know our assignments, and uh, continue to make one on one. It comes down to one on one catches. So we got to win our one on ones. And and uh, then we'll start getting getting better at third down. And, but they're good on third down, but just like any other team. CBS was saying the same thing. He took some of the blame, I think, for maybe some of the runs that he thought he could have done better on. But as far as run blocking, whether it's third down or any other down, how how has that come along for you guys? And, and it seems like you all had, have had some success there, obvious, obviously, the last couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, uh, I've gotten – as I got more reps, I got a lot better at run blocking, I feel like. Um, so I'm just continuing to use uh, technique and stick to it. And, um, you know, it's gotten a lot better, and we're really good at running the ball out of 12 personnel. But So we got to continue to do that and continue to run the ball well out of other packages. Austin, obviously, matchup has kind of necessitated you guys go into the run a little bit more the last few weeks. But with the passing game, and whether it's you or Spencer or Juice or whoever, I guess, what do you guys kind of see as the, the next step for this group to, to – push the ball for downfield a little more, get get a little more vertical. I guess what are you guys kind of seeing that, that can maybe help this pass game get get a little more involved maybe? Yeah, I like that hat, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but, yeah, we got to, you know, it comes down to one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, you know, we had a couple drops, I think three drops, and um, we got to catch catch the ball one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, so once we start doing that, it'll start going because, you know, if we catch one of those and we're really rolling. So um, we just got to keep doing that. But – it's, it starts with everybody, and it starts with me, and um, we just got to continue to win one-on-ones. Awesome. What have you seen so far out of Missouri's defense that makes them as effective as they've been this season? 
Uh, they play really hard. Uh, they got a good edge, and number 18 is really good. Um, so we got to, you know, be on on our stuff with technique wise, and uh, we got to play hard. And you know, if we do, we got to just do what we do and f do our identity, and uh, it'll work out. Stog, what is this offensive identity? You said sticking to it. What? How would you kind of describe what this offensive identity is? Um, I mean, whatever Sat calls. I mean, we got we got all the talent in the world. Uh, we just got to make plays. Um, that's what it comes down to. And uh, I've said it I've said it a lot, but it's win our one on one. <laughs> and I guess you've been part of teams that have gone on some winning streaks and had some success in the middle of the year as an older guy. How do you kind of keep the freshmen, keep these younger guys who might not have experienced something like this, focused and and kind of keyed into to Saturday? Um, you know, every week's a new week. Um, every play and every play is a play of its own. So you got to treat it as that. And you got to have the same intensity and not get uh, complacent, even though we have won a few games. But we have to just keep going because, you know, you can get it's college football. Anybody at any time can get beat. Um, so we're playing, we're playing a really good Missouri team. I don't think we're overlooking them at all. They're really, really good. They beat South Carolina last year. But um, so we got to continue. We just got to. You know, just do what we did last week, do what we did the weeks before, and continue to take that serious approach to it. And uh, we took a good step today out at practice. Austin, I'm guessing you've seen some of the pictures of the Tennessee celebration after Alabama and LSU last week, the fans coming on the field. Have you ever experienced that on one side or another? And what are the – what's the thinking when you see people running onto the field when you're trying to get off it? Um, they rushed the field last year at Oklahoma twice. Um, again, it was OU Texas. They rushed the field, and that's when we won. So that was like, that was fun, cool. Like I knew everybody, so <laughs> whatever. Found my family. So, but then when we lost to Baylor, they rushed the field as well, and I was just getting off the field. I mean, it doesn't. No one's gonna hit me. Yeah, I was gonna say, is it a scary situation at all, or you just figure, all right, I'm getting know. to the locker room, and that's all there is to it. I mean, we're it's Baylor, but you know, <laughs> so uh, so. But then, I mean, Tennessee's a little bit different. You know, I don't know, but I guess. But Baylor people are usually pretty nice, you know. So <laughs> I wouldn't expect any of them to hit me. So. All right, thank y'all.